for you, my friends, this is lecture number two in the Calculus 1 lectures, Tangent Lines and Slope Predictors. In the objectives of this lecture, we see more general slope, parabolas and tangent lines, predictors, and also we will define what do we mean by normal lines. Now we know the tangent line to a circle is defined as a line here at the point P perpendicular to the radius OP. So there's a 90 degrees here. But what will happen to a tangent line to a curve if it is not a circle? The graph of the function y equals f of x has no radius, but we need to draw a tangent line to the graph at a point P. So it should be in some sense the same direction at P as the curve itself. So what do we mean by line's direction? It is determined by the slope. So in the coming slides, we are going to find a slope prediction formula that will give the proper slope of the tangent line to any curve at a point P. We will find this formula in a few minutes. Let's start with a simple example here. If we need the slope, determine the slope of the line tangent to this parabola here. See this, this blue one is the parabola y equals x squared. We know that. And suppose we have a tangent line here at point P, A, and A squared, maybe like 5, 25, 2, and 4, etc. So how can we find the slope of this line? Unfortunately, we cannot find the slope of this tangent line because to find the slope, we need two points and we have only one point on this tangent line. So that's why we have to find a formula for the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line to the curve at any point. Now, let's see here, we have this curve here, the red one is the function y equals f of x. Let's take two points on this curve, P and Q. P is A, F of A, and Q, A plus H, F of A plus H. So there, there is here H, the difference between these two points. So we call this secant line. See, this K is secant line. It passes through two points on the curve. Let's find the slope here. So it will be change in the y divided by change in the x. y2 minus y1, as you know, divided by x2 minus x1. So it will be f of a plus h, this one here, minus f of a divided by a plus h minus a. Now, when we simplify the denominator, we get h. So this is the slope of this line, the secant line, we call it secant line, that's k. Now later we will find the slope of this tangent line. So the slope of the k, the secant line k, is f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. You know h is the difference between a, a plus h. Now this is the formula. If we find the limit, of this formula here, the slope of the secant line, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. If we try to make h approaches zero, as small as possible, that will be the slope of the tangent line. You can see that in the graph. If we try to make h as small as possible, reaching zero, then this line k will be exactly the line L, which is the tangent line. So remember this formula now, the limit as h goes to zero, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h will be the slope of the tangent line at a. Now let's find the slope of the tangent line here of this parabola y equal x squared at the point a, a squared. This is example two. Now we can find it because the slope now we can use the formula and then we put a plus h in the function here. It will be a plus h squared minus f of a will be a squared divided by h. Let's expand this 
a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. a squared will be cancelled. Take h as a common factor. Cancel the h. We have the limit of 2a plus h as h goes to 0. We can replace that here. So it will be 2a. So the slope of the tangent line is 2a. Let's determine the slope of the tangent line to the parabola y equal x squared at x equals 1. And then we find here in b, determine the equation of the tangent line to the same parabola at x equals 1. Now we can see here example 2 because we have found the slope. Now x equals a, that means a is 1. So f of a will be f of 1, 1 squared, is one, because we replace here 1 in the function. So we get the point x1, y1, which is 1, 1. The slope is 2a. We have seen in example 2, 2 times 1 will be the slope is 2. Let's find the equation of the tangent line. y minus y1 is equal mx minus x1. We have seen that in lecture number 1 of calculus 1. So it will be y minus 1 is equal 2 times x minus 1. Simplify y equals 2x minus 1. Here we see the normal lines. We have a curve and the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent. See, this is the tangent, we call it here line P, and this is the normal line, we call it N. And we know if the two lines are perpendicular, then the product of the slopes is minus 1. So the slope of the normal line minus 1 over m if the slope of the tangent line is m. Now you might ask why normal lines, why we use them. Very nice idea here. If we have any curve and the normal lines can be used to find the point that lies on the curve, we have to find this point here that is closest to another point. So we have a point A, let's see, and we need the closest point on the curve to this point A. So we have to use the normal line, which is perpendicular to the tangent. Let's see a nice example here. Find the point P, C comma C squared. Okay, that lies on the curve, the parabola Y equals X squared, closest to the point A, 3, 0. So we have a point here, A, 3, 0, given. And we need to find the point on the curve here, C, comma, C squared, closest to this point. So how do you do that? The tangent line here, the slope is M, which is 2C. We have seen that in example 2. Okay. So now we find the slope of the normal line by two ways. So we have the point three zero, we have the point here C, C squared. Let's find the slope, C squared minus zero divided by C minus three. That's the slope of the normal line. Also the slope of the normal line minus one over M, which is minus one over two C. So we make these two slopes equal. C squared divided by C minus 3 will be equal to minus 1 divided by 2C. Cross multiply, we have 2C cubed plus C minus 3 is equal to 0. Now this is a polynomial equation, degree 3 cubic, not easy to factor. So we can use P over Q. Remember P over Q method? Complete algebra course, lecture number 37 rational zeros test. So we have to try plus or minus one, we have to try plus or minus three, then we make synthetic division. So we get C is equal to one. One with the solution closest to the point A zero. If C is equal to one, that means we replace it in the parabola. So we get Y also is equal to one. So A three zero, the closest point on the curve will be one one. Now let's look at example number five. Here we have a function given y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. We need in part a determine the equation of the tangent line to the given curve at x equals minus 1. Also we need to find the equation of the normal line 
to the curve at the same point. First, we see this is a quadratic function, y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 5, so small a will be the coefficient. 2, b is minus 3, c is 5, and we take x equals minus 1, we replace it in the function to get y. So the point of tangency is minus 1 and 10. Now for the slope, 2ax plus b. This slope we will see in details in lecture 3, how can we derive the slope from this function? So the slope now, if you replace a is 2 and x is minus 1 there, so the slope will be minus 7. So the equation of the tangent line, y minus y1 is equal m x minus x1. Just put the numbers there. 10 is y1 uh, minus 1 for the uh, x1, and then the slope is minus 7. So the equation becomes, equation of the tangent line will be, y equals minus 7x plus 3. So easy to find that. We have the point of x equals minus 1 where the, the, the line is tangent, also normal. So the slope of the normal line will be minus 1 over the m. So the slope will be 1 over 7. We replace that here, you see 1 over 7. We can use the same line because normal is a line and the tangent is a line. y minus y1 is equal m x minus x1. This m here is for the normal 1 over 7. And the same point, minus 1 and 10. So the equation of the normal line will be y equals 1 over 7x plus 71 over 7. After you simplify this equation, you can try it yourself, please. Now, always check the playlist Calculus 1 solved questions because we have more questions that will be solved to understand the lecture better about slopes and tangent lines and normal lines. This is the end of lecture number two in Calculus 1. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope I can see you in another video with another topic. Thank you guys for listening.